What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. We're going to talk about Screen 5 again. Kevin Williamson had an interview with The Independent. I'll leave a link to that in the description. And he has expressed like a lot of things, just how Scream has been like a, or at least Sidney Prescott, his, his final girl he created, has been like a way for him to identify something he created for himself to kind of represent his own struggles growing up as a gay kid. Um, and he also expressed his passion for the franchise went over that talked about his love for it and talked about a lot of the turmoil that went on with not not a lot of it but kind of was hinting at the turmoil that went on with screen four how he was apprehensive to do screen five you know just some of the stuff we kind of have already heard him talk about but he did get into how many times he's actually seen this upcoming fifth film and how he initially of course did not want to do it but he realized he did not want this to happen without him being a part of it he i guess what also ended up happening i would imagine is he realized you know he wasn't dealing with another pair of weinsteins he was dealing with a plethora of people it seems like at this point that have a passion for this for this franchise and what Wes craven and him helped create back in the 90s and they want to come out and make a I would say a high budget fan film <laughs> that's officially a part of the continuity and that's that's what they're getting we have fans living out their dream because there's not a single piece of doubt that I have within me that thinks that these people are not fans of this franchise they have everything about them just seems authentic they they seem like they're coming from a very a very place of uh a place is just feeling so lucky that they were even getting a chance to do this and they they want to do it justice they don't want to step on any toes they don't want to of course let down anyone that they look up to because he went on to kevin williamson that being he went on to talk about the enthusiasm that matt and tyler had the new directors for the screen film and how they were enormous screen fans we know that we know nev campbell likes to talk about this letter they sent about how they got into filmmaking and how it was kind of related to those movies and wes craven and his work was kind of the reason that all happened so he says that he has seen the movie seven or eight times because he's a he's very critical uh he was he was nervous about not liking it because they were all wanting to know what i thought about it and he's saying that he he just loved it he said it's really good and a lot of fun if you like the first scream i think you're gonna have a blast so is this him saying that it's the best since the original if anything i think this is just him being aware of the fact that he knows there's a certain admiration for that original more than any of the other ones scream 2 comes in a close second uh and i know scream 3 has its fans like like myself <laughs> but you know i'm one of those fans who likes to talk a little bit more about what might have gone wrong with scream 3 than all the stuff that went right uh because i feel like there's more there's definitely pros that are strong enough to keep it above being a bad film for me the pros are handled so well that all the cons with scream 3 they they don't bring it down to being a bad film or anything like that for me and then in regards to screen four you know screen four I, i've said this many times my problem with screen four because i feel that's a step up from what we got with three but the tone is kind of just like it's tonally uneven some of the acting yes is a bit uh maybe wonky at times but then you have some incredible moments you have a motive that was way ahead of its time given everything that's going on today a lot of people were mocking it back then oh this is stupid i mean again there's there's a time and a place where you know you don't sit down listening to a crazed person rationalizing everything and then think that they're the, they're the smartest person in the room i mean look at what they're doing um <laughs> uh, of course of course you're good any sane person i think that regardless of what these these killers say some part of you is going to think that's stupid because billy loom is going around doing all that because you're frustrated about your parents i i understand your frustration but what you're doing is stupid mickey what you're doing is stupid mrs loomis what you're doing is stupid i understand your frustration same thing with roman i understand all of that what you're doing is still stupid <laughs> uh so like i think honestly he's just going off of knowing that there's a lot of admiration for that original film and people hit considering that to be the best entry of the franchise and he's just saying you know he's smartly marketing it by leading it with you know if you love that first film you're gonna love this one so 
him watching it eight times or so that means i have to go out there and watch it more than that i already had plans to see it in theaters close to 10 i'm definitely going to try to aim for something higher though because just like him i want to be able to sit down watch this movie one time give my initial thoughts to you guys and then afterwards see it again multiple times make multiple videos talking about different aspects of screen five while we await for the inevitable scream six that we hopefully deserve to get depending on how it performs at the box office and critically of course and again as far as like what the critics have to say i know some of you are just mostly waiting to hear what i have to say i do also know that a lot of you you uh tend to trust what i have to say in the sense of you'll try to see where i'm coming from i know a lot of you will reach out to me and say i saw the movie i saw where you're coming from and then we kind of go back and forth talking about it. i like those healthy conversations not someone who wants to jump down in the comment section and tell me i'm so wrong i'm so wrong i'm so wrong but then you're not countering anything i brought up you don't have any counter arguments i i just like healthy conversations about filmmaking if i say something was handled badly in a film and someone can give me a reason why it was handled good you know you're opening my mind to reevaluating that film so i just want to be able to watch screen five a plethora of times of course i definitely will have seen this movie more than 20 times in this lifetime hopefully and just want to be able to sit down evaluate the character of sam carpenter determine if i think she has a longevity as a final girl to carry the franchise and carry the mantle from sydney prescott and how i think the the narrative should go forward with those characters and if the town of woodsboro will be factored into a future installment after this and just going over of course the killer's motives if there are any naysayers about the motive trying to reason and provide uh, logic as to why this motive is actually quite brilliant if it is a brilliant motive and if it's a bad motive going over reasons of why it's bad there's just not been a single motive where i've said this is bad there's been motives where i'm just like oh, okay i'll accept it but i can't wait to see this movie his enthusiasm for it makes me even more excited but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and miss a video in the description i have links to my social media accounts my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video